all right so in this video we'll take a look at how to configure APM 2.8 flight controller this will be an in-depth video as well so from flashing to setting everything up but before that let's take a look at overall I have on the drone so here I have a 200 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter and I also have a FPV camera then for the telemetry port I've connected a 8C12 module and it's a 433 megahertz transmitter and receiver module which works with the serial interface I'll make a video on this separately but here if I want I can connect a Bluetooth module as well so that way we can configure all the settings without the USB cable then here I have the 3DR power module to power up the APM flight controller then here on the I2C port I have connected this uh, radio link OST module in order to access or use this I2C port we have to solder two pads on the flight controller and here I have the picture so if you want you can use this for the GPS compass or use it as a UART and if you want you can use it for the OSD as well because I wanted to use OSD for the camera I have over here I have bridged the OSD connections and one more thing uh, if you have this flight controller brand new and if you connect the compass wire to this I2C port which is what the manual and some of the websites suggest uh, there's a likely chance that it will never work because you have to bridge the pads that we just uh, saw so instead on the GPS port obviously I have the 4 pin connector from the GPS module and just below that we have another port to which I've connected the compass connector now one very important point to note firstly APM 2.8 has a built-in compass so you have to decide if you want to use an external module like this which has a compass as well or if you want you can use the internal compass and because I got this flight controller as a kit with the GPS module and the 3DR power module uh, I have decided to use the external compass on this so for that I had to remove this jumper connection so this tiny jumper is actually on this pin over here on this very first pin is where the jumper is so if you have the jumper on the flight controller then the internal compass is activated and if you want to use the external compass then you have to remove the jumper from this two pads or the pins similarly if you take a look at this output side of the flight controller you will see that there's a label called GP1 and that's basically a jumper as well so for example if you have the 3DR power module and if you have the red wire from your ESC connected to the flight controller to avoid damaging the flight controller or frying it it is advisable or I would say it's mandatory to remove the JP1 jumper uh, pin which is over here and I've removed it as you can see so before connecting the battery and trying to fly the drone you have to make sure to uh, decide if you want to use the jumpers on the GPS and the GP1 because this will decide how you set up the flight controller and how you wire up the ESC as well so just to make it clear if you have a red wire from the ESC connected to the APM to power up the flight controller and if you're not using the 3DR power module then you can use the GP1 connector because that will distribute the power to the other ports as well which can power up your OSD module or the telemetry module however if you have the 3DR power module and if you decide to use the red wire on the output then make sure to remove the GP1 because the power from the 3DR module and the ESC will conflict and there's a likely chance that your flight controller will get damaged and uh, end up smoking so just keep that in mind 
Therefore, I've removed the GP1 jumper and I've also removed the jumper for the built-in compass since I have the external one. And here I have the receiver wires connected to the input line. So I have like seven or eight wires connected. Yeah, seven wires connected. Channel six is not in use because practically there's no option to set it up in machine planner. And to power up the FPV camera and the video transmitter, which is over here, I have soldered the power cables to the to the power pads on the bottom plate. So we have one extra connection over here. You can see that there is a negative terminal over here and a positive one. So the FPV camera is powered from this side. And to power up the video transmitter, the power cables are soldered on this side. And the advantage of using this power module to power up your flight controller is basically that it will supply clean 5 volt power to the flight controller. So when you are flying the drone and if there's a sudden thrust or drop, there won't be any uh, bad effect on the flight controller and it will continue to operate smoothly. Alright, so let's flash the firmware on the flight controller. So for that, I'll connect it to the computer. And after that, make sure that you have Machine Planner installed in your computer. And because APM 2.8 is outdated and retired, using the latest version of Machine Planner is not advisable because there are some problems with it and you won't be able to calibrate the compass or the accelerometer with that. So use Machine Planner 1.3.68 to configure the APM 2.8 flight controller and to confirm the COM port of your APM flight controller go to device manager and check in the ports tab and here we can see COM17 is uh, Arduino Mega 2560 so that's the APM flight controller now before connecting to the flight controller go to initial setup and and from here we will have to update the firmware click on install firmware and when you install machine planner for the first time you will see an option called install legacy firmware but for some reason if you don't see install legacy firmware there's another method to update the firmware on the flight controller and it's a sure shot way of flashing the firmware without any errors now since I have a quad copter with me uh, I need the quad copter firmware file and since APM 2.8 is retired, we cannot flash the latest firmware file. So then to flash the firmware, click on download firmware. And you should see this website pop up. If you scroll down, you will see firmwares. And if you have a plane or any other device that you are working with, select that. Since I have a copter, I'll select that. And in here we have a list of firmware directory for latest stable and beta files so i want the stable firmware file so i'll click on stable the last firmware file for apm 2.8 is 3.2.1 so if you know that you can just go from here if you're not sure just click on stable and you should see this uh, list of flight controllers uh, here we have apm2 and quad if you have any other configuration like a hexacopter or a octacopter, you can select that. I'll have to use APM2 quad, so I'll click on that. And if I click on firmware version text file, it says 3.2.1 is the firmware file. And ardocopter.hex is the firmware file, so I'll uh, click on it to download. So once the file is downloaded, you can quit the browser and after that click on load custom firmware and then select the firmware file that you just downloaded from the browser so arducopter and click on open and now the firmware will be updated and this will take about three to four minutes so just be patient and don't disconnect the usb cable 
Similarly, if you ever want to reset the parameters on your flight controller, what you can do is you can flash a different firmware. So for example, if you have a quad, then to reset the parameter, you can flash the rover firmware or the plane firmware and then flash the quad copter firmware again. So that way all the parameters will be uh, set to default because even with the reset button on the APM, uh, we cannot really reset everything unless we change the firmware file. So that's just how it is. All right, so the firmware has been completed and it says done. So now I can click on connect. If you're not sure of the COM port, you can set this to auto. But since I know the COM port, I'll select that and board it has to be 115,200 and then click on connect. And it says getting parameters. Now here it says new firmware is available and that's Arducopter version 4.2.3. But since, like I said, APM 2.8 is retired, there is no way to flash the latest firmware. So just ignore this and disable that show me option. All right, so now we have the firmware file flashed on the flight controller. And if I move the quad, the hard screen over here is also changing so which means everything is working all we have to do is just calibrate a few sensors and uh, set up the flight controller so under the initial setup i'll go to mandatory hardware first option is the frame type so we have a x configuration if you want to load custom parameters from uh, some of the predefined frame type you can do that or just ignore this next we'll go to accelerometer calibration and the accelerometer calibration is something that you cannot do with the latest version of machine planner at least with APM 2.8 so that's why using 1.3.68 is advisable so to calibrate it says level your autopilot to set default accelerometer minimum and maximum three axis this will ask you to place your autopilot on each edge so click on calibrate place vehicle level and press any key so just press any key on the computer and then it says place a vehicle on its left and press any key so like that and press any key then place the vehicle on its right then place vehicle nose down and press any key place vehicle nose up and lastly place vehicle on its back so that's upside down like this and it should say calibration successful So this was the three axis calibration of the accelerometer. You also have uh, another option where it says level your autopilot to the set default accelerometer offset. And for this also you have to place the cord on a flat surface. So click on calibrate level and it says completed. So the accelerometer has been calibrated. Next, we'll calibrate the compass. Now, over here, uh, we have three options on the top side. If you have a Pixhawk flight controller, this is for that. If you're using the APM 2.8 uh, internal compass with the jumper on the two pins, then click on this and automatically external compass will be disabled. If you have an external GPS module with compass like this, then then select the APM and external compass option and automatically this will be enabled which is externally mounted and roll 180 because the antenna is on the top side so it has to be flipped now to make life easier uh, this is where a telemetry module or a bluetooth module is useful because if you have a USB cable like this to calibrate the compass uh, 
basically you will tangle the usb cable and there's a possibility to disconnect the wire and and the calibration will fail so this is where a telemetry module is beneficial so you can wirelessly connect the flight controller to your computer and configure all the settings for now i'll show you with the usb cable but before we do that uh, if i go to the flight data if i rotate the quad on the x axis you will see that the reading over here which is for the compass in degrees uh, will also change so to calibrate the compass the first step is to orient the quad or the flight controller so that it's pointing the north direction so once you have zero or close to zero over here which means you are uh, good to calibrate the compass you can go to initial setup and in the compass option depending on which compass you have external internal make sure that is selected and click on live calibration so first we have to move the drone in the pitch axis After that, the roll axis. And if you want, you can also move it in the X axis or the yaw. Currently, I've got about 1500 samples or so, which is more than sufficient. But I'm going to continue this until it uh, stops by itself. Here it says uh, new Mac offsets. The offsets for compass are so and so and they have been saved for you. Okay. So this is the most tedious part about this whole process because once you have the APM on the cord and if you're trying to set it up with the USB cable, the cable will tangle up and it will just be a hassle to untangle it and remove it. So moving forward. So next we have radio calibration so obviously i'm using the i6x with open tx and in the model setup in the rf settings i'm using fs2a and i've selected pwm as the protocol and here i have a spare receiver with me so i've connected all the wires to the flight controller and I've already bound the receiver to the transmitter. And if I move the sticks, you can see that in Machine Planner, all the channels are also moving. Similarly for the AUX channel as well. In the mixer page, the first four channels are pre-assigned, which is aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Channel 5, I have assigned switch C, which is for the flight modes. Channel 6, I have left empty. I'm not using that. And channel 7 and 8, I have assigned for switch A and switch B. I've actually replaced a three position switch from my old radio for switch B. So my switch B is also a three position switch. So channel 8, which is switch B, I have auto tune. So then uh, to calibrate the radio, if I move all the sticks and the aux channels, you can see that the values are moving in the screen. So I'll click on calibrate radio. And then I'll move the sticks to set the end point. And also move the aux channels. 
and after that click on done so the radio transmitter has been calibrated the important thing to note here is uh, when all the sticks are left to the default uh, without any input or the trims the channel value should be close to 1500 I have more or less uh, close to 1500 so I have uh, 1498 microseconds on the pitch roll and your axis which is uh, fair enough then next we have servo output I'm not using this so I'll skip this then we have ESC calibration I have the ready to sky 40 amp ESCs and to calibrate those I'll have to connect it to the receiver and set the throttle to maximum so the ESC calibration will do after a while then we have flight modes so if I move the switch C you can see uh, flight mode 1 4 and 6 is highlighted so first flight mode is stabilize then flight mode 4 uh, I'll set this to uh, return to launch and flight mode 6 I'll set to altitude hold and click on save modes now if I want I can actually set this flight mode 4 to loiter instead of return to launch because uh, I already have return to launch on channel 8 or 7 I believe but what I found out is if I don't set return to launch on any of the first three flight modes then during fail safe return to launch is not activated and this may be a bug with the firmware or the mission planner but I'm not sure but this is what I found out so so in order to get the return to launch working uh, it's important to have the return to launch flight mode in the first three flight modes of your radio then after this we have fail safe and here we have a low battery depending on which battery you're using if you're using a 4s then feed in a value that you find appropriate since i'm using a 3s i'll set this to about 10.6 which is about 3.53 volts per cell and reserved MH if you want you can assign this I'll set this to 500 milliamps I have a 3000 milliamp power 3s lipo battery so when the battery is low and it uh, reaches 10.6 volt I can decide to either land or return to launch I've set this to RTL and then we have radio fail safe in here also we have three options so if the radio signal is lost then we can decide to bring the drone back to the launch location so enable return to launch then we have enable continue with mission in auto mission which is the waypoint i believe and then we have always land so it's up to you what you want to select if you want you can select land or return to launch I'll set this to RTL as well and here we have the fail safe PWM value so trigger throttle PWM value you can leave this to the default which is 975 and last we have the ground control station fail safe enabled so this might be useful if you're using the 3DR telemetry module however I'm not sure on this so I'll skip that next we have optional hardware first we'll take a look at the battery monitor so to calibrate the battery voltage if you have a 3 dr module like me then then in the monitor option select analog voltage and current battery capacity you set to whatever capacity you have i have a 3000 milliamp power 3s battery sensor you can select to 3 dr power module but what i found out is the voltage reading is not accurate so I'll set this to other and hardware version is 
APM 2.5 plus 3D power module and then I'll connect the battery to the flight controller and straight away we can see a battery voltage reading uh, on the screen so the measured battery voltage is about 11.34 volts and if I go to the flight data tab in the HUD screen we can see 11.35 volts is the battery reading so I'll connect this voltage meter to the balance port and it's at 11 volts 3.68 3.68 and 3.69 so so that's about 11.0 volt so to edit the battery voltage I'll highlight the measured battery voltage and type in the voltage reading so 11.04 volts and then to save this just click somewhere on the screen and then shuffle back and now we have uh, accurate battery voltage reading now it's time to calibrate the ESC on the quad and to do that you will have to connect the ESC wire to the channel 3 on the receiver now I have a spare receiver with me so I'm using this so I'll disconnect the power and what I'll do is I'll remove the first ESC wire and connect it to channel 3 to power the spare receiver I've connected the jumper wires to the positive and negative on this side of the flight controller and I've bound the receiver to this radio so then I'll set the throttle to 100% so I'll push it all the way up and then plug in the battery so right now I have ESC1 for calibration and now I'll push the throttle to zero and you should hear a few tones on the motor So ESC1 is calibrated, if I give throttle, it will rotate, similarly I will have to calibrate the rest of the three ESCs as well. Throttle all the way to 100. And then plug in the battery and then set the throttle to zero second ES is also calibrated I'll calibrate the third one the third ESC wire I have the red power cable connected so I've disconnected the power jumper from the flight controller so straight away I'll wire this to the third channel set throttle to 100 and connect the battery throttle down And then the last ESC I'll disconnect the spare receiver and now I'll wire up the ESCs 
in the correct order on the flight controller. Now ESC1 or the motor one is this. Then we have number two on this side, then three and four. So that is how the correct wiring is for the APM 2.8. So the first is the front right. So I'll connect that to number one. Then second is bottom left. Then third is front left. And lastly, fourth is uh, bottom right. So that's the correct order of the motor. So one, two, three, and four. So now if I go to the motors tab in machine planner, so I'm in the motor test tab and I'll increase the throttle percent to let's say 10 and duration to five seconds. If I click on test motor A, obviously for this you'll have to connect the battery as well so i'll click on test motor a and the first motor is spinning similarly if i click on test motor b this motor will spin motor c and motor D so like I said the lettering and the numbers are not in order but from this diagram uh, motor 1 is this 2 3 and 4 and A B C and D so that's how the motor layout is uh, it's a bit confusing for the first time but once you know it uh, it's not a problem so to arm the APM cord, I have to yaw to the right with zero throttle and the motors will start to spin and it says armed. And to disarm, just hold the yaw to the left with zero throttle and it will disarm obviously while assembling the cord you have to keep in mind the motor direction so with the help of the motor layout for the APM cord check the motor direction if you need to reverse then switch or swap the ESC wires the outermost ESC wires now next, uh, to set up the channel 7 and 8 flight mode, uh, you will have to go to configuration and from there in extended tuning, you will see RC7 and RC8 uh, option. So for RC7, uh, you can select from this list. So I'll be auto trimming and auto tuning the quad. So for that, I'll select safe trim for channel 7 and for channel 8 I'll set this to auto tune and then click on right parameter and click on yes then if you want you can activate geofence so you can set a boundary for the drone so that if it crosses that boundary it will either return to launch or land for this the GPS data has to be accurate and you need to have a good uh, GPS connection with good number of satellites so if you want you can enable this and then select the type of geofence so you can select altitude circle or altitude and circle and then select the appropriate action that you'd like uh, either report or just decide to land or return to launch and then you can set the maximum altitude so i'll set this to 200 meters and maximum radius to let's say 350 meters and return to launch altitude in meters 30 
until and unless you don't have a good GPS signal or uh, you won't be able to arm the quad because geofence is activated and for this to work uh, obviously the GPS data has to be uh, good so keep that in mind for now I'll disable this then you have basic tuning no need to change anything over here then we have extended tuning so these are the default bit values when I get the time to perform auto tune to stabilize the drone then I'll compare the new values to the stock values and here we have the standard parameters uh, you don't have to change anything as such uh, unless you want to use OSD and the telemetry module but I'll cover that in a separate video otherwise this video will be a lot bigger and it won't have much value to it then you have advanced parameters and full parameter list and uh, full parameter tree if you want to hide or enable these options then go to planner and here select layout to basic to hide the advanced settings or set the layout to advanced to get all the options so once you have followed all the steps and the motor direction and the layout is correct and the compass is calibrated along with the accelerometer everything is good to go just we have to make sure that uh, the return to launch on fail safe and battery low is working correctly obviously since i'm indoors i don't have gps connection so i might not be able to test return to launch in the next video i'll test this and post a flight video and if i get time i'll also try to perform auto tune and see how it goes that's all i have to share in this video there will be two more videos on this topic the first will be on how to set up the ost module with the apm flight controller so that you can see all the flight data on the on screen display and the next will be about the bluetooth module and the 8c12 telemetry module so i hope you found this video helpful and informative uh, although the apm 2.8 is outdated and retired and there's no point in buying this i just bought this kit and assembled it uh, just for fun and to experiment with a uh, machine planner and use the waypoint uh, feature so thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos